pleasure to introduce to you uh, Chief uh, Pepper Pan, uh, Big Q, the yeah, the big bear. No, I got kind of male. Well, I have three girls already. I need a boy. Hey, do not define as a girl uh, or a boy. He's already got three girls. Uh, You're working on that. You know, so you guys stand over there for a second. Now you three girls have to stand up. Stand up here. Well, we have to have you as something. This You're time, mate. And you for this one, for this game, you're going to be the girl. Okay. So, here we go. Now, what I need you to do <laughs> is you three need to come and stand over here next to the globe stick and swim. Yes. Who of you have played the game musical, <laughs> musical oh, no. chair? Yes. How many of you just love oh, that game? Oh, No, we don't need to wiggle your ass. We just need to concentrate on the chair. All right, are you ready? Are you ready? You cannot fight. Well, you can if you like. But when I say go, you have to run to the chair. First person that gets their bum on the chair wins the chair. If you don't get your bum on the chair, you have to stand up. All right? Ready, set, go. Not did I say you guys? I was talking to the girls. Oh, yeah. Who is it over there, girls? I said I'll talk to you guys in a minute. Okay, then. Okay, I stayed here. All right, if that gets good, all right, it's okay. Yeah, good teamwork, boys. Now, good team boys, Bye. I'm talking to you now. Okay. Girls, remain seated. No, no, you can't sit on them. You can't, you can't, you can't sit on them. Now, boys. Boys, <laughs> Kenneth. What I'm going to get you guys to and do, then just going to casually sit here like listen, is the three of you, and when I say go, you go over near the, the stickers there, move over near the stickers there. No, when he says go, we're going, oh, no. So I'm not paying attention. No, Come over here, there we go, good job. Okay, okay. Move over near the stickers, oh, here we go. No. Wait, wait, when he says go, <laughs> when I say go, you have to run towards the chairs and sit on the lady's lap. No. All right? Oh, let's do this. I knew so, it. So, what you have to do. Is choose your lady. Ready? I'm fine with you. No one take my Laura! On your marks. <laughs> Set. <laughs> Did I even say go? <laughs> yeah, I think he wanted both of them. Hey, alright, alright, alright. Okay, now. Yeah, this is good. Right, right, right. Good job. You're with me, my friend. You're with me. Yeah. Yeah. You stay set. You stay oh, set. Jesus. <laughs> You, oh, you can sit on her knee, crush her. I mean, no, <laughs> swap out. Crush you can swap her. out. There we go. Well, that's yeah, cute. Swap out. That's cute. Right. Okay, How many of you yeah. love this game yeah. when you were playing um, it at school? Um, it's <laughs> questionable now. It's questionable. <laughs> Why is it questionable now? I don't really know. I'm I'm you feel really a little uncomfortable? Yes. A little bit. <laughs> I mean, I really, I make other people uncomfortable, so I'm pretty fine here. I really like that All right. You should have surprisingly loud. You're calling me sir. Yeah. The two of you. Oh, it's boring. Unless you're sitting on the lap, it's not so boring. It's really awkward. You two guys have missed out on your chair. How do you guys feel? I think. At least two guys. I don't know. You don't know how you feel. I'm sitting on another chair. Yeah. 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 Yeah
a partner, whether they're the same gender or the opposite gender, it's entirely up to you. We're going to be talking a little bit about that next level kind of relationship. Now, in a, in a few months, we're going to be doing a series called uh, Bus Stop to Bedroom, which is going to be a very Oh, damn. Did you yeah. do that last year? Not last year, about two years ago. And, um, is it on your bus? It's not. <laughs> No, it's not. No, it's not on my bus. Oh, so, uh, out of the anyway, anyway, back to it. So the challenge is simply this: in relationships, it can be just like that. How can I get to that other person the quickest? How can I choose in an instant? that relationship, that person, that I think is going to be my partner. See, we live in a, in a culture that says to us that it doesn't matter how quick um, you get into friendships or into relationships, we never take the time to stop and think about it. Because we live in, around people who feel like, you know what, yeah, let's look at that guy, you know, or let's look at that girl. Oh, man, they're so fine. If only I could be with them. If only I could get with them. If it's your favourite band that you follow for like forever, and you get to kiss them. Yes! Yes! Why are you? Why don't you say me? You know, so the challenge for us is simply... Ashton loves Ashton. She sure does. Yeah. <laughs> She's having a little moment here in front. So, um, the, ch sh 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 the challenge is simply for us. Just continue, we'll be right. We will. So, the challenge for us simply is this you could take a, a, a set of dice and you could just say, you know what? I think this guy, that girl, I think this is what I'll do. I'll just risk it. I just throw the dice, I don't know anything about them, I don't know the first thing about them, I don't even know the colour of their eyes because I'm looking elsewhere. I don't know, now we need to be serious, come on, stay with it, otherwise we'll run out of time. So this is a serious topic for us guys because we choose our friends like the roll of a dice. Because of the way they look, because of the way they act, because of the way they behave, we think, oh, if only I could be friends with that person. If only I could fit in with that group. If only I could be like that. Or with the other person standing on the outside, why won't people like me? Why won't people accept me? Why won't people come into my friendship? Why won't that girl go out with me? Why won't that boy find me adorable? Why won't they? I am adorable. So what they do... Yes, you are. Though. And so... What we do is, we take a set of dice in our head and we go, you know what, yep, oh yeah, that'll do, five. I'll take the number five. So, what we do is we say to them, yep, I'll, uh, I'll settle for number five. Now, if I'm throwing the dice, what number do I want in a girl? Six. Ten. Why do I want six? Is it one better? But I've got two dice, so how many should I have? Wow. I want a 12 out of 10. That's rude. That's really rude. <laughs> you might say it's rude, but the fact is the challenge for me is simply this. If I want a girl that's a 12 out of 10, then I better be a boy that's 12 out of 10. Yeah, Michael. What's going on? This is not about, this is about you taking ownership, not pointing another finger at someone else. You are so making up for that later. So the chat, and I don't mean making up, you know, so, so the challenge is, that's making out, by the way. Uh, so the challenge for us is simply this. If you've ever asked yourself these questions, here, I'm going to give you a bunch of questions, right? You'll know whether you're settling for less, if you might be in a friendship or a relationship, and I want you to ask yourself these questions right now, um, and this can come across um, for friends. I've asked myself these very questions in this last year and I've made decisions about friends and relationships that I've decided to end because I've asked myself these questions. So I'm not telling you something that I haven't applied to my own life. And some of those relationships have been very, very close. And so here you go. Here's a couple for you. I'll take them slow so that you can ask yourself this question. Um, you're always tired. Whenever you're around that person, they exhaust you. Or you're the person that exhausts other people. 
Are you, an, are you an exhausting kind of person? The second question you keep saying is, after I get there, after I arrive here, after I do that, then I'll choose a different guy, then I'll choose a different girl. I'll just wait until after I've done all this, until we've experimented, until I've, until I've done a whole lot of stuff with this person, then after that I'll, make, I'll decide whether they're the right one for me or not. It can be the same with our friends. You know, oh, I hang out with this group of friends. You know, oh, yeah, we're all going all right. We're all going on the on the right direction. Oh, okay. So do they do they influence you to drink? Do they influence you to have take drugs? Do they influence you to hook up? Do they do they influence you? Oh yeah, but see, as soon as I leave high school, it'll be different. Because after I leave high school, then that's when I'll be different. Because I'll be at uni, and that group of people will be different. But see, after I leave uni, then I'll be in the workforce, and then that group of people will be different. Do you blame other people for the way you are, for stuff going on in your world? I reckon, uh, I reckon as I look back on my life, I reckon there's hundreds of times I've blamed other people for stuff that I should have taken responsibility, hundreds of them. I can, I can remember, you know, really clearly incidents in my life where I've blamed other people because I had one of those, you know, sort of sad m moments, one of those sooky moments about me. Poor me. If only my, if only my dad wasn't an alcoholic. I am the way I am because my dad was an alcoholic. <coughs> my mum and dad worked all the time, so that's why we, we don't really love one another. If my dad ever told me that he loved me, I would have loved to hear that. My mum is not an affectionate person, so I'm not an affectionate person because my mum doesn't like to hug. So we blame other people for what is actually our responsibility. You can be an affectionate person. You can love other people. Regardless of what your family has modelled to you or shown you, you can actually be a different person. That's too likeable. So, 15 years ago, I made a decision that my family, because of my family, I wasn't going to settle for the way I was I was actually just going to say, you know what, I'm going to be a different kind of person. 23 years ago, when my first son was born, you saw, some of you saw him standing in the doorway. He's totes hot, you know. And, I saw him, and when I saw him, I thought, you know what, regardless of the modelling from my dad, I'm going to love this boy like no other man um, in his life. He's going to know a dad that is absolutely solid. Made that same decision for my second son. Yes, love. Oh, no. um, the third, the fourth question you can ask yourself is you don't think you can. You don't think you can change friends. You don't think you could be a good friend. You don't think you can be anything to anybody because you settle for less every time. Nobody would like me. Nobody would want to hang out with me. I'm boring. I'm not really interesting. What you do on the weekend? Nothing. That's why no one hangs out with me because I'm boring. You say to everybody, oh, yeah, I'm thinking about doing this. I'm thinking about getting my motorbike licence. I'm thinking about changing schools. I'm thinking about getting a part-time job. I'm thinking about changing friendship circle. I'm thinking about changing my hair colour. Good on you, Emily. <coughs> Locking it out there. I'm thinking about doing that. But you actually do nothing. You think a lot and do nothing. We call them a gunner. That, that friend that's always gunner. I'm going to be wealthy one day. <laughs> really? What are you doing about that now? I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to sort my life out. I'm going to. Okay. Tick tock. And you keep saying the same thing. Someday, things will change. You criticise successful people, people that are going on, having good stuff, good luck in their life. You know, I was, the other day I saw Naomi's picture on Facebook. She had her posty bike and she's got a little green ninja. And I went, whoa, rocket! You know, I saw that, you know. And there's all that, I saw these motorcycles on there and I thought, yeah, you know, she's, she's in gunner. She's in gunner, buy a motorcycle. She went out and bought one too, you know. Uh, one that goes whip and the other one goes, not so much whip, you know. So. <laughs> One just goes, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. One goes, huh? Good one, girlfriend. You can own that one. 
But we get jealous of people. We say, we, we criticize successful people. Guys, I don't know about you, but do you ever see someone put a Facebook status up and they're having a really good time about something and you like it, but really, you don't really like it. You just go, bitch, you know, that kind of moment where you go, oh, she's such a, oh, yeah. oh, better like it because I'm her friend. Yeah. I really don't like that girl, but oh, I like Because that could be you. Because you're a settling for kind of friend. Kind of person. I oh, know, it's terrible. <clears throat> you read, now this is, we're all guilty of this. Oh, it'd be interesting to see who's not. We all read and listen to gossip. Oh, hell yeah. Yes! Yes, bitch! Yes! Right here. Yes! I opened Facebook. I'm looking through. I said it the other day. I was at the end of the beach or something. I'm looking through and I said to my son, there's nothing, there's nothing interesting on Facebook. No crap. Now, people are putting some good stuff up there. I'm looking for the juicy stuff. Where's the stuff going on? Oh, there it is. Someone fed their dog. You know, oh, there's the stuff I'm looking for. Seriously? You know, so we can look for stuff. I see that on, uh, on Facebook all the time where people put these bold statements that means nothing to anybody else and then they get all this questioning that goes after it. What's going on, girlfriend? Sup, I'm there for you. You know, what's happening, you know? Like they have all these comments, they put this feeling so crapped off right now. Oh, what's going on? You know? It's sympathy. Mm. Like it's Everyone's really like, big sympathy. Yeah. Like yeah. Like yeah. Sympathy is a dangerous emotion. Empathy is a different one. Empathy says, I can empathise with where you are. Sympathy says, oh, yeah, let's gang up on that other person. She's such a bitch, you know? So... Um, you're always playing small. And what I mean by that is you're a person that says, you know what, I will never have this. I will never have that. I will never go after, I'll never be anything. I will never be that kind of girlfriend. I will never be that kind of boyfriend. I will never be, I will never be that kind of person. Because why would anybody like me? Why would anybody uh, want to hang out with me? Far less love me. So, food, alcohol, withdrawal, TV, become the highlights of your day. I've got to get out for my favourite show! <laughs> and if it doesn't happen, you're ringing someone and saying, you better record that bitch! And you're talking to your mum, you know? So, and it's not happening, if it's not happening, it's not happening, you know? <laughs> you know, you're going to be a no good mum if I come home and that show isn't recorded. I'm going to be downloading it, going to be using up all the internet. So, the challenge for us is simply this, is that you need to be a person who has really come to a point where you say, I'm not settling for anything less in my life, in my friendships, in my relationships. And you know what? It takes phenomenal courage to do that. Not just any old day, find it in the Wheaties bucket, bucket kind of courage. It takes courage where you are prepared to be rejected. I had a young lady say to me the other day, I hang out with a whole bunch of people who are drug addicts. I said, oh yeah, cool. You know? And she said, I need to escape that group of people. And I said, okay. Well, I'm not going to be with you every day. So as we sat in this environment with her, um, and she was going on and on and on about the people around her and this desire to change, this desire to be more, this desire to do more. I took her by the hands and, Georgie, you're going to be my model. Come up here, lovey, you know? Because you're hot. <laughs> oh, girl. I took her by the hands. There's a whole people, uh, Beck will tell you, there's a whole bunch of people around her, around the table accusing this young lady of what, where she could, what, she could, what she should be doing, how she should be living, what she's... And she's just saying, I said, take my hands. I took my hands. I said, now, I want you to look straight into my eyes and I want you to black out every other person but me right now in the room. And I just spoke straight to her about her worth, about how amazing she is and that she'd been settling for less and she's going to need to take some steps. After I spoke to her, you feeling alright? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can sit, it's alright. When we uh, came back to reality, everybody in the room was bawling their eyes out. Because the reality was 
as I spoke to this young girl about the things that she had settled for in her life, it began to strike a chord in the people all sitting in the room. I was um, you know, they were trying to maintain their own sense of composure because who was it all about? Her. It was all about, hang on, don't talk to me. Look at her. It's all about her, but all of a sudden, ah! you know, there was just a few moments then. We spent two hours with this girl and I loved reducing the entire family to tears. It was like high five to the girl across the table because all of a sudden she began to feel like she would stop settling for less and said, I'm going to have to take some steps. Probably next week she might even be here. Yay! New friend. Hooray for that person. It's a matter of she took a step. Susan has on her foot one step at a time tattooed onto her foot. It's part of her fitness business. You know, it's one step, one degree, one thing. One, one step forward. And I want to encourage you when it comes to your relationships and friendships and everything else, you can be, and I shared with you last week um, about the stuff about my dance stuff, the bass, all this sort of stuff. Stuff that I had buried deep in my, in my gut for 20 odd years that all of a sudden I'm thinking, why am I settling for less in my life? You don't have to, it's not about being arrogant. It's not about being up yourself. It's not about being selfish. It's not about being the person that's like, I'm going to use everybody to get what I want. We're not talking about that person because that person, you want to punch in the face. We're talking about being a kind of person that says, you know what, when those little thoughts come in my head that say, I'm not worthy of anything. So if I was to stand six or eight boys up here and you were to look at them and you say, right, this is, you know, the new boyfriend is right, you know, and all the girls, <laughs> and the girls are all trying to choose who it is. How many of you watched that show, uh, first, right. first Dates? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Is it called First Dates? Yeah. Yeah. First Dates. Yeah. It kills me every time. They get up to the bar and they meet. Oh, I'm a bit nervous, a bit nervous. Duh. Really? <laughs> like, why? Because you don't know anything about it. You don't know anything about this person. Oh, and they sit at the table and, table and talk crap. Oh, they sit there and flirt. Oh, you're so hot. Can I touch your biceps? You know, it's like, well, we can get, we'll get to that bit, you know. But the reality is I want to know if you've got something up top. I want to know if you've got something in your brain first that says we could be friends. Nice. Whatever that tool is, it's freaking me out right now. So, so here's the thing. Fear of being alone is like this. I don't, uh, uh, David, you can be my model. Oh, no, no, not David. Right? So, if David and I are mates, now David's a good looking fella, he's tall, he's strong. He's masculine, you know. He's also, he's also furry, you know. And the challenge is, he rides, he rides Harleys. Now, what am I into? Harley. So he looks good in leather, you know. And so every time I see David out on his Harley, what am I feeling? I think it's something like that, you know. I'm thinking what? Grief. I'm thinking green. I'm thinking, oh, he's trying to do an adventure. He says to me, goes out, got out, polished up the Harley the other weekend, went out for a ride. Went, yeah. Good on you. Oh, my, 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 my. You know, and I'm thinking, you know, so, he, so he's got similar interests. So I say to him, um, yeah, how about, uh, uh, how about uh, we have a barbecue? Can I? <laughs> please say yes, please say yes, please say yes. You know, because if he doesn't say yes, what's that going to do to me? Oh. The fight. You're gonna go cry. Yeah. Because I'll say, what's wrong with me? Now, I have told David that I am pursuing him as my best friend. Oh. I'm not just letting him in. Oh. He's not letting him in. gonna make me work for it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, he's not, and he's so. Oh, uh. oh boobies. <laughs> I'm so red. So, the challenge is simply for us is that. As we form a friendship, there's got to be a common ground. There's got to be interests that are the same. And I have to have the courage to think through, does this... Go- now, it doesn't mean he has to have all the same values as me. It doesn't have to have all the same moral standings as me. But there's something that we have this kind of synergy that we connect on. It's not just Harley Davidson. It's about life. It's about helping young people. It's about these other things that are more important than just thinking, wow, oh, he's hot and I love the goatee. You know, so it's more than just that. You're a great model. Thanks, David. Oh, nice, good night. You know, so the challenge for us simply, guys, in our relationship with one another is what, have you stepped back 
long enough to actually take stock of what it means to actually be a friend, far less have a friend. Because if you're a settle for less kind of person in your relationship, so our series tonight, I think we talked that me, you, us, you first have to have to take, sort of take a step back to figure out, is me a good friend? Say that. Is me a good friend? It's good English, you. I don't care about grammar, I care about friendship right now. Say this out loud to me. Just repeat it back. Is me a good friend? Right, is me a good friend? So, if we first have to take stock about is me a good friend, then if is me a good friend, then maybe you will be a good friend too. Because I'll be okay about me. See, being alone is one of the scariest feelings for humans on the face of the earth. Being alone, not having anybody to care for. We have, I have dealt with um, teenage pregnancies right through 30 years. And I say to the girl, um, why did you get pregnant? You know, there is like a crap load of contraception out there and it didn't break. He wasn't that big. They stretched to the size of your head. You know, so the That's fact so is, so she goes, oh, because... I don't know, it's crazy, I don't know how many times I heard this, I don't know how long he's going to be around, but I know that the baby will love me. I said, really? I kind of thought that it was about the baby, you loving the baby, just saying. Oh yeah, but the baby will love me for the next 10 years, 15 years. Wait. <laughs> well, no, you know, we don't know. So the challenge for us simply, guys, is this tonight. In your relationships, right, there's no point trying to do the um, you and then us as friends or as boyfriend, girlfriend or relationship partner, whatever it is. There's no point unless you take a step back and be okay about you first. If you have these passions, desires, things you love doing and you're not doing them because you're in a relationship with someone, warning signal right there. Girls give up so many things for boys, it is astounding. All of a sudden, a girl falls in love with a boy. Ooh, he's got a car. You know, and he picks me up and he takes me everywhere and it's like amazing. And all of a sudden, the things that you were interested in, he's not so cool with. You know, and so what you do, go, nah, it's all right, I, I don't really need to go there. Don't, don't really need to do that thing. And before you know it, you become this shadow of somebody who was amazing. Boys, this is for you. You have to be okay about being male. Now, I don't care whether you're same-sex attracted or whether you're attracted to the opposite sex. You have to be okay with being you first. What are you into? What do you like doing? What are you pursuing? What is your passion? Before you start looking for a relationship to go, I walked into school today and here's these two year sevens walking down the corridor. Holding hands. <laughs> they were like that big, you know? And they're walking, no offence, but they were like that big. Those these, I went, oh, 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 my girlfriend, you know? Now I had a girlfriend, a few, when I was in school. The one that made the biggest impression on me, what was her name? Oh, no. Oh, no. no, no, she was the person that scared the poop out of me, right? You know? <laughs> she was the scary one with the big bazongs, you know? She was like, ah! You know, I used to run from her. She came, they were running at me before she was. You know, no, no. The girl that impressed me the most about my entire life, what was her name? Wanda. No, no. Wanda. No. Penny. Penny was her name. She was this beautiful, there was in primary school. And she was a hippie, you know. And she used to take me down onto the oval, lay me down in her lap and put daisies in my hair. And I thought... I didn't even know what kissing was at that point, but boy, oh boy, I was up for something at that point. You know, I was like, oh, kiss me. I don't even know, it's just, just dreamy. And I can still see that image in my mind. I can still see. I'm 50, coming up to 50 years old, and I was in grade five, somewhere there, and here she was putting daisies in my hair, singing lullaby songs to me. I'm going, I just want to stay here. And that memory has stayed with me because the challenge is simply this, guys. We could settle for less for the person that doesn't want to put daisies in your hair but just wants to take your daisy and that would not be the, the, the best decision that you've made straight up this week, this day. So if there's a guy that is just pursuing you because you're hot, then step back from them. 
Gentlemen, if you are pursuing a young woman just because she's hot and she puts her bits out there, step back and become a man first. Hey, boys. <laughs> I've been in school, I see it, the skirts are getting shorter, mate. It's very difficult for young fellas, you know. I've seen no skirts. Okay, I don't want to know what you look at at night time. No. So, the challenge is simply... <laughs> The challenge is simply for us guys, is as we go into our pack tonight, this week, I want to challenge you, if you are a friend, right, a good friend to somebody, be a good friend. First take a look at who you are, what you're passionate about. I love young James. He is a pilot. He's not training to be a pilot. He is a pilot, you know. Skipper, that is amazing. You know, he's, yeah, all right, you can fly my plane, baby. You know, so the challenge is, at, how old are you, 15, 16? 16, oh, of course, you had to sign off when you're 16. 16 years old. I look back at my mates. My mates were all, you know, they weren't worrying about being pilots at that age. 16 years old, he's a gun. Because he's got his focus to say, you know what? I'm going to do something with my life and I'm not going to settle for less. He's so inspirational. The guy behind him, Josh, has also begun the journey of becoming a pilot. Two pilots at Bridge Bills that will fly our jumbo. So the challenge is that simply, are you hanging out with people who you are, in, who you are helping achieve some great stuff or are you pulling them back and sucking the life out of them so that they can settle for less in your friendship and in their life are you that blood sucking friend that just wants to draw everything out of your friendship or if you can make a decision tonight you know you know what i have been that guy i have been that girl but from tonight this week I'm going to work hard at not gossiping, not being jealous. I'm not going to settle for less in a friendship. I'm going to be the best friend. I'm going to step back first before I think about you and I. I'm going to step back and I'm going to have a look at what can I be? What can I bring to this friendship or this relationship first? And if somebody, if you have settled for less in a relationship where you have stepped back from things that you are passionate about, let me warn you, it is a slippery road and it is a terribly heartbreaking road further down the track when you look back and go, I used to do that. I used to play piano. I used to love um, basketball. I used to love horse riding. I used to do that. But then I found a boyfriend. <laughs> now I'm, he's, oh, he's in my world. Trust me. The world's a small place. So, create your world and the man will come into it. One of our challenges as we close is we're not good at waiting. We're not good. If we can't click on the microwave and it's be ready in a couple of minutes, you know, if we go to Macca's and they say, oh, that'll be a one and a half minute wait for your burger. You know, oh, wow, back in the day, we used to wait 10 minutes at the uh, fish and chip shop to get your burger made. Now if it's not made in one and a half minutes, oh, you know, you know, your knife and the person through the window. It's like crazy stuff, right? So that's scared her. She did a little wee in the front there. Because, oh, I'm just scared. You know, so the challenge is simply this for us. Be patient. It is better to wait. It is better to wait in friendships. It is better to wait in relationships and know who you are than be the kind of dodgy person that draws down on a relationship. Guys, this week, I have been not a good friend at times. There have been times in my life when I look back and I go, yeah, I was a bit ordinary. I was a bit of a suck face back then, you know. I was a bit of a, you know, I used to manipulate the way I dressed or the what I smoked or where I went or what I drank in order to fit in. And all of a sudden, I lost who I was in the midst of all that. Be you. If you like red hair like MJ's, then wear your hair, hair red and wear it proud. Be you. If you do it for attention, that's okay, because it's about you. We're all doing it. We're all seeking attention somehow. I'm not repainting my hair red. I've had it every other colour, but I'm not going red, because I was born red and I was told off. You know, so the challenge for us is that go rings. Whatever. Love you. Anyway, the, the reality is this, guys. This week, when you go into your pack now, don't just fluff around in your pack. Like it's, oh yeah, the weather was pretty warm. 